Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Sindhu Shelley. I'm a student of Brandon University. Today I'm going to do a head to toe physical examination on Mr. Shelley. He volunteered to become a patient for us today. Um, I have instructed him to empty his bladder before the test, and his height and weight and vital signs are recorded. And uh, his distant vision is uh, checked on a smell and stare and documented. Um, before, um, Shelley, um, if you experience any pain or discomfort during the procedure, please let, let me know. Before I do the test, I'm going to wash my hands. Okay, I begin the test by you know, checking the hair, skin, and nails. First, on the on the skin, I look for the hypo or hyperpigmentation of the skin, any abnormal erythema or any abnormal lesions of the skin. Um, okay, and um, um, and also the check the skin is uh, dry or moist skin, and then check the thickness of the skin and the turgor of the skin by you fold the skin and then for a second and then let go and see uh, the normally uh, the skin go back to normal position. And then next is um, the hair. Look for any abnormal distribution of the hair and then the, the, the texture of the hair. And then look for the nails. Nail, um, look for any, um, the color, red or dusky color. And then uh, the contour shape of the nails and the capillary refill. Check the capillary refill and then um, check for any clubbing of nails, which I'm not seeing any of this in this, in this case. Then move on to head and face. On the head, I inspect and uh, look for any bumps or lesions or scales um, of the, or um, dandruff of the hair. And then palpate the facial bone. Do you experience any pain or tenderness? Uh, no. Okay. And then um, I palpate the frontal um, sinus uh, and then the maxillary sinus. Do you experience any pain while I'm doing no. this? Okay. And then. Um, Next is um, check for the fish, uh, the cranial nerve number five, which is a trigeminal nerve, by doing a light sensation to cotton ball test. By you, I'm going to use a cotton ball, and um, can you feel that I'm touching your forehead? Yes. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and please let me know where I'm touching. Yes. Um, so cranial nerve number five is intact. Then I'm going to do the cranial nerve number seven, which is facial nerve. Um, can you close your eyes? Open it. Open the eyes. Wiggle your forehead. Okay. And then clench your teeth. Okay. Flip out your tongue. Uh, stick out your tongue. Okay. Flip your cheeks. Okay. And then uh, push your um, tongue against my finger. Push your tongue against this finger. Okay, cranial nerve number seven, facial nerve, which is intact for Mr. Shelley. Then move on to the next um, system, which is the eyes. I'm going to look for the external organs, uh, eyelids, eyelashes, and eyebrows for any swelling or redness. And then look the conjunctiva for any redness, um, which I'm not seeing. The redness shows infection. And then look for the sclera uh, for alloyish discoloration, which is also, I'm also not seeing any alloyish discoloration of the sclera. Then um, next is, I'm going to do the um, direct and the consensual reaction to the light where you um, I'm going to shine the light into the left eye and people are, uh, check the pupillary reaction of the left eye that is the direct reaction and then the um, shine the light into the left eye and check the pupillary reaction of the right that is the consensual so um, we can also test on the other um, pupil pupils for direct and consensual reaction then um, I'm going to do the accommodation testing. I'm going to hold my uh, finger about four inches away from um, patient's eyes and ask us to look at my finger. And then look um, wall behind, uh, behind me and then look back to my finger. So you can see the pupillary construction. The pupil construct to um, the close objects. Uh, that is the accommodation testing. And then next is cranial nerve number three, four, and six testing, which is the, the oculomotor and then um, trochlear and abducent testing uh, by um, doing the six cardinal gaze of use testing. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to ask you to look straight and then and um, move your eyes, only move your eyes to the direction of my fingers, okay? I'm going to um, 
move my finger to far uh, upper right, uh, left and then far left and lower left back to the center lower right far right and then upper right I can see the equal and the eye should move um, equally and symmetrically on all six directions in this case in Shelley's case all these three four and six cranial are intact so next is um, uh, after I move on to the the ear you look for the external ear for any um, any redness or any discharge coming which I'm not seeing anything and then I'm going to do the uh, the check the eardrum by using an otoscope um, for adult you you hold the uh, the pinna uh, up and backward and then you look for the eardrum Okay, and in this case, uh, the eardrum is pearly white, and if there is any redness or um, redness of the eardrum, that shows infection. And then uh, after that, you palpate the master process, which is uh, for any tenderness, do you have any pain, do you experience? Okay, and then next is um, uh, the cranial nerve number eight testing, uh, which is the test for hearing, which is um, the testers are called Weber's and Ring test by using tuning fork uh, have the, so you tap the tuning fork and put the end of the tuning fork at the forehead can you hear on both ears yes. okay normally the patient should hear on both ears and if they cannot hear on both ears then they have a hearing problem then i'm going to do the ring test by tap the tuning fork and put the end of the tuning fork the master process tell me when it stops yes and then you put the and on the the earlobe can you still hear it yes okay so that is air conduction is better than the born conduction that is called ring test so all these tests are testing for cranial nerve number eight which is the acoustic nerve so then um, move on to the to the the mouth uh, you look for the look inside of the mouth for any um, any abnormal um, look the tonsils okay open your mouth okay. stick out your tongue say ah. ah okay look the tonsils hard palate soft palates and everything and then um, and then uh, ask the patient to stick out can you stick out your tongue and then, so his tongue is on the middle line that is okay that's you can close so that is i'm testing the cranial nerve number 12 that is the hypoglossal and then uh, test for cranial nerve 9 and 10 that is the uh, glossopharyngeal and uh, vagus nerve by doing the gag reflex testing um, so i have the tongue depressor can you stick out your tongue and say ah uh -huh. i'm going to use this tongue depressor and and then I'll put that the you can see the gagging sound, so that is testing for the gag reflex. And then um, that is, um, and also I'm going to do a um, um, cranial nerve number 11, that is the, the accessory nerve. I ask the patient to shrug your shoulder, shrug, shrug like this. Okay, so I can feel that resistance, that is cranial nerve number um, 11 test, which is intact in this case. And then um, Next is the nose and the, the sinus. You, so you look the nose for any subtle deviation, which is I'm not seeing any, and then the symmetry. And then you use a flashlight and check inside of the nose for the nasal mucosa and turbinate, and, uh, which is uh, normal. The nasal mucosa is slightly um, red, which is normal. And then you palpate the... Um, the frontal sinus, uh, that is frontal sinus, and then the uh, maxillary sinus, and then here is the ethmoid sinus. Uh, if you feel, do you feel any pain or anything? No. Okay, uh, and then check for the patency of the nose by ask the patient to close one nose uh, like this, and then can you breathe? Breathe in. Okay, so and then vice versa on the other other nose, and then. Um, Next is look the, the neck um, for the symmetry, any abnormal pulsations, any abnormal mass, the position of the trachea, um, that is the neck inspection. Then um, move on to the, the, and the chest and lung. I'm going to ask you to turn that way. The post, I'm going to look 
do the uh, posterior um, chest um, by ins you have to inspect first uh, look for any abnormal shape or any um, um, the symmetry of the um, posterior um, um, posterior chest and then auscultate for the uh, the, um, the lung sounds you start from the the uh, upper and then auscultate on both sides auscultate the lung sound ask the patient to take a deep breath and and uh, look for the pitch and the extent the length of the lung sound both expiration and during inspiration and then um I'm going to do a couple of tests on the lungs. That is, um, the first one is uh, tactile primitus. I'm going to do, um, ask you, can you tell 99? 99. Okay, 99. 99. 99. 99. Yeah. You can feel the, the vibration on both sides equal. And then next, that is called the tactile primitus. Then next is respiratory excursion. You're going to put the, the thumb on uh, above the 10th, uh, uh, the rib and the costal space and then uh, ask the patient to take a deep breath okay yeah you can feel that rib cage expansion and the contraction during the um the inhalation deep inhalation then next is uh, diaphragmatic excursion that is by doing the um by doing the percussion you start percussing okay take ask the patient to take um, uh, exhale and then hold the breath take a exhale and hold like that exhale and then hold breath okay and then you focus at the intercostal space until the dullness changes to resonance it's about here and then you mark that area and then ask the patient to the take a uh, hold breath take a deep breath and hold it can you take a deep breath and hold it? Okay, and then you you percuss down until the doll change to resonance. So which is about so the difference between this um, this is about four to five centimeter. That is the diaphragmatic excursion. Okay, now you can come to this side. And then you inspect the anterior chest for any abnormal shape, uh, any palpate, uh, any the, the diameter, and then uh, you auscultate uh, for the lung sounds. You start from the clavicle and auscultate. Take a deep breath and then auscultate for the lung sounds and both side and then and then. Okay, so that's the, okay, and that's the chest and lungs, and then move on to the, the, the uh, cardiovascular system, you look for the um, pulse, um, radial pulse, okay, so radial pulse, rate and rhythm, and then the brachial pulse, and you auscultate for the, thank you, carotid broods by using the um, stethoscope. Carotid bruise. Okay, and then with the, both the, the bell also for the carotid bruise. Okay, and then next is you auscultate for the heart sounds. Uh, just on the, the by using the diaphragm of the stethoscope first on the right, second intercostal space. Uh, first you auscultate for the aortic um, heart sounds. And then the left, second intercostal space, you will auscultate for the pulmonic. And then one inch below is the herbs point. And then the third intercostal space. And then the fourth intercostal space, intercostal space you um, uh, hear the tricuspid wall sound. And then the fifth intercostal, the mid-clavicular line, you can hear the, my, the mitral wall sound. And then the PMI is located between the um, mid-clavicular line and the fifth intercostal space, which is about 10 centimeters. That's the normal. And then you also auscultate uh, the heart sounds by using the, the bell of the uh, stethoscope and in the reverse directions. You start with the fifth intercostal space for the mitral wall, and then you fourth intercostal space for the tricuspid, then the third, and then the herbs point, 
and then the second intercostal space for the, um, the pulmonic wall and on the right side aortic wall. Okay, uh, this um, the uh, cardiovascular, then move on to the abdomen. You, uh, abdomen, you inspect for any um, abdominal distension, any masses or any um, pulsa abnormal pulsation or anything. And then you slightly palpate the four, the four quadrants of the abdomen, slightly burn. Are you experiencing any pain or anything? No. Okay, and then um, you palpate um, for the uh, the balsams for all the four quadrants of the abdomen. Okay. Okay, and then you um, pop, uh, auscultate the aortic bruits. Okay, and then um, renal bruits, iliac bruits. Can you lean a little bit? Okay, and then the the femoral bruits. Okay. So that concludes the abdominal um, system and then move on to the um, uh, neurological uh, central nervous system. So I have, uh, I have um, checked almost all the cranial nerve functions except the cranial nerve number two which is the optic nerve by using the ophthalmoscope. So, so use the ophthalmoscope and then uh, when you use ophthalmoscope, if you are looking at the, the left eye, you use the, the, or I'm going to use, check the right eye by using my right hand and then um, look for the optic nerve. Okay. Okay. And the optic nerve, I'm looking at the optic nerve and the surrounding blood vessels and uh, looking for any glaucoma or any problems. Okay. And then, um, then move on to, um, I'm going to do a couple of tests on the central nervous system. That is, one is the um, alternating, um, rapid alternating movement. I'm going to ask you to tap here like this and then. So when the patient has a um, central nervous system dysfunction, cerebral, especially cerebral dysfunction, they won't be able to do, uh, uh, the hand coordination will be difficult. Then uh, I'm going to ask you to get up and uh, lay down, please. Okay, and okay, I'm going to do the heel to shin test. So I'm going to use the heel and then make a straight line movement there. Okay, do it on that one. So when they have a cerebral dysfunction, they won't be able to move their heel to shin on a straight line. That is the heel to shin thing. Can you stand up now? Okay, and now um, hand to um, uh, finger to nose testing. Can you do a couple of testing a movement like this with the finger? Yeah. Okay. And then touch my finger and and then touch the nose. Touch my finger and touch the nose. Do it fast. Touch my finger. Okay, that is a uh, finger to nose testing. So when they have cerebral dysfunction, they won't be able to, the hand to nose, uh, the finger to nose uh, coordination will be difficult. Then um, next is Romer's test. Can you stand up, please? And then um, this is a test of uh, proprioception. And when they have a, a sort of a proprioception problems, um, I'm gonna ask them, they rely on their eyes. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and then stand uh, straight on your, um, yeah, and then close your eyes. So when they have an appropriate session problems, they will lean, lean to uh, one side. So they, because they normally rely on their eyes. Then uh, can you make a couple of walking, normal walking? Uh, okay. So while he is walking, while he is walking, I'm looking at the posture, balance and everything, okay? And then walk on heels, please. Walk on heels, couple. Okay, and then walk on toes. Next. Walk on toes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, roll, then uh, heel to toe walking. That's, I'm gonna ask you to walk like this on a straight line. Okay, that is called a tandem walking. Okay, thank you. And then um, I'm gonna ask, ask you to take a couple of shallow bend like this. Okay, thank you. And then, then next is um, test of sensation. So by using the sharp and the um, dull, um, so these are the two objects I'm 
that I'm going to use. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and tell me which, well, if, whether it is dull or sharp, okay? Close your eyes and tell me. Is it dull or sharp? Dull. Yeah. Okay. Now. Sharp. 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 Okay. Dull. Okay. Thank you. And then um, vibration testing by using tuning fork. Tap and then uh, and put uh, tap the tuning fork and place the tip at the bony areas. Can you feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Feel the vibration? Okay, now tap and then on the great toes. Can you feel it? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that is um, next is um, deep tendon reflex testing. My first one is the brachioradialis testing. Okay, that is C5, C6. Okay. You see the contraction. Okay, the contraction can be. And then uh, next is biceps tendon reflex. So, you use, okay, see the contraction, C5, C6, uh, the reflex testing. And then next is triceps, it's a high reflex, it just let it relax. And then you tap at the triceps area. Okay, and then you look for the, this is a high reflex testing, C6, 7, and 8. Okay, and then the petalar reflex. Okay, so move a little bit in. Thank you. You tap at the patellar groove, okay, and then you look for the, the muscle contraction here and there. And then aculus and tendon reflex, okay, and then that is the aculus tendon. And then the Babinski reflex, you use the tip of the tuning fork and then use the, you can see the plantar flexion of the right. So that concludes the central nervous system and move on to the musculoskeletal system. First inspection, you look for the, um, the fingers. First you look, uh, inspect for any deformities or any tenderness, I um, mean, look for any redness. Then palpate all the joints, okay, of the fingers. You feel any pain or anything? No. Okay. And then the uh, range of motion ex uh, movements are flexion. You do this flexion, okay. And then extension and then adduction and then abduction. And then move on to the wrist, you palpate for any pain or tenderness. And then, um, do you feel any pain? No, no, okay, no. now range of motions are flexion, extension, okay, adduction, abduction. Okay, and then the elbows, um, you palpate the elbows at the, the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle and they, if there is any pain or anything that shows the, el uh, the tennis elbow and then I palpate the olecran and prosa and then um, and the movements are flexion, extension, okay, and then uh, pronation, supination. And then the shoulder, shoulder is, um, you palpate from the clavicle all the way up to the toe uh, shoulder. And then um, range of motion exercise include flexion, flexion, extension all the way to the back. Okay, and then um, internal rotation. Internal rotation asks the patient to scratch at the neck. And then external rotation asks the patient to touch at the opposite scapula. So that is the external rotation. And then um, adduction is adduction, and then abduction, yeah, away from the body. So now, thank you. And then now move on to the, the hips. Can you please lay down, please? Okay, lay down. On the hips, you look for any hip deformities. And then, um, and then you look for uh, the, um, uh, the palpation of the sciatic notch, which is, uh, be is located between the anterior superior iliac spine and the greater trochanter. There's a sciatic notch. Do you experience any pain or anything? Yeah. Okay, now the movements of the hips include flexion, range of motion. Okay, can you on your back, please? No, no, just lay down straight. Okay, so ask the patient to bend, bend your knee. Yeah, like this. Okay. And then extension. And then adduction is movement like this, and then abduction. Okay, that is the knee. And then I'm going to test the um, the muscle strength. I'm going to push it down, and you push up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's good um, um uh, the resistance. Yeah, you can stand up and put down here. Then look for the knees. 
inspection you look for any tenderness welding of the knees and then um, the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle you palpate and then the patellar groove and the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus for any pain or anything and you palpate at the posterior aspect of the the knee so for any pain or anything and then uh, the the flag, uh, the range of motion is a flexion and then extension and then okay adduction and then away from the body abduction and um and then ask the patient to um push it uh like yeah push it resist okay thank you that is the muscle that's enough thank you. and then uh, that is the uh, checking for the muscle strength then um, lower, coming back to down, calcaneus bone, and then the, um, the metatarsal bone, you palpate all that, and the DIP and TIP joint, all you palpate all the areas, and then um, and the movements are um, flexion, okay, and then extension, okay, and then inversion and aversion. And then by checking the muscle strength, he asked the patient to push it down when you push up. Okay, so that is good. And now, and then I'm going to check the muscle strength of the fingers by um, spread your finger apart. And then I'm going to push it um, close, try to close, and you try to press it. Okay, so that is the testing of the muscle strength. And then for the wrist, make a fist and then uh, push it down. I'm, okay. And also on the, the elbows, I'm going to push it uh, up and you push it down. Okay. And for the shoulder, um, I'm going to try to push it up and you try to push it. So that is the checking the muscle strength of the, the extremities, uh, upper extremities. And then um, next is um, uh, two things that I'm not doing today is the breast examination and the, the genital and the uh, Genital urinary system that is um, breast examination. You can either do by laying down position or standing position. We are doing the standing position, ask the patient to lift their uh, hand up, and then you inspect the breast for any deformities, any abnormal swelling, or any the skin, any cracked uh, nipples, or any abnormal discharge coming out. Then you palpate for the any lumps, um, any and. Uh, that is uh, mainly the breast examination, the genitalia, yeah, the, the external genital organs, male and females organs, and they look for any abnormal discharge, any um, pain or any ulcers, um, look for any, um, or uh, inspect for any uh, sexually transmitted disease and all, and then um, any abnormal bleeding, come, discharge or bleeding or anything like that. So that concludes the, the head-to-toe physical examination today. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you.